Well, finally, we fact-checked Chad, <laughs> keeping him honest for once. Okay, well, Ants, they picked this map, and Astralis chose to start on the CT side. You can see a GG dot bet odds at the top of your screen heavily favoring Astralis in this one, and there's multiple reasons for that. One of the absolute best teams to ever touch the game, this five-man roster, and they're kicking things off with aggression. Yeah, I mean, I'd favor the USP every time. I'd be a bit sketched out if I was Glaive, that's for sure. He's got all that util, doesn't want to be going down, especially no armor, but he is the one that's trying to control this. If he can just try and look under that Xbox smoke, no. And he doesn't have a nade, so we can't do good damage. The flash might keep them a little bit at bay. Good peppering, Doto. Brought down to 50, but it does look like they want to pop out short on flashes, and it's only Device and Zipex there. Glaive from CT. What's Sunny Smoke for? Ah, there it is. So he's going to try and fake mid to be here. He oh, faked the drop off and everything. So device, a lot of work to do here. And the flashes are good. Two have got down into CT. Device is going to get double peaked from two different elevations here. And they've got more flashes. Great shooting. Device gets one while flash. That's more than you could ask of him. But into the site and Zipex reveals his location. He does get caught by Sergey on the hunt. And this is great shape up for Ents. The entirety of Astralis grouping towards the very spawn. And a smoke grenade from Glaive to enable them to isolate these jewels. It's nice. Into the site. Dupree, uncontested. Hunting. Whoa, gets played around the edge of the smoke. Yampi, oh, three clean kills. And that's Enz taking the T-Pistol. I want to elaborate as we move forward into this game, potentially of what Dodo was saying about looking for a more passive player. If you consider Enz, and I was talking about, we get Sergei back to star power. We already know that Alu's a fantastic AWP, but Yampi, extremely explosive. And once upon a time, Sunny, he was a superstar in his own right. It doesn't feel like the team needs more firepower. It just feels like they need to be put in the right places to get the best out of that like, firepower. I think Dodo is going to be given, if you were to compare the two teams in the server, the Zipex role. Yeah, uh, that's probably a very good way to look at it here. So if he can just hold his own, Ooh, lovely Alu. It's unlikely he finds the finisher, but he does tag up Device down just a little bit through the doors. This could spell trouble for Ents here. They're going to set up for a B execute, and we have three players already leaning over towards the B site. Okay, go on, Magisk. He's gone for the nade. That could be a little deep. It's good damage. Softens him up. The 5-7 of Dupree does nothing. Magisk trying to delay. Good scout shot hit. And he gets dunked, Magisk. Oh, oh and a nose scope from Device. Maybe they can contest. They are getting really... Heavily wounded. I can't help but feel that Device might want to consider bringing the scout into the next round. B retakes with double scout. I mean, the nade might do something. He's naded the box. Oh, if he had found either Dodo or Sunny yeah. there with that HE, that was a frag and probably an opening in the three on three, but you're right. The save call is the best option for Astralis here. And, well, I don't want to say the inventors of percentage Counter-Strike, but definitely those who brought it into global focus are the ones here to hold on to their weapons. So we're going to see... Really holding that? Wants to shoot some toes. Yeah, I mean, he's, it would just be the big toe. I didn't realize Zipex had a foot fetish. Yeah, I mean, many people do. Fair play. Not here to judge. Yeah, that's called kink shaming. And uh, we don't do that here on I Am Beijing Broadcasts. So two scouts, a deagle, and they weren't able to pick up any extra bits and bobs there, Astralis. So it appears that Magus and the likes of Dupree are going to be operating with very little. Dupree's actually gone for the Zeus. We've seen him make that work close towards mid doors before. So let's see if he goes to a similar position with it. Wouldn't be the first time he's been able to get a kill with that, pick up a gun and convert around. I'm getting flashbacks right now. <laughs> yeah. Magus is just going to invest absolutely <laughs> nothing. So there's a Zeus on the ground. Uh, someone picked that up. I'm sure it's a prized possession. Device will do exactly so. Hello, Glaive. That was a very good chance. He tries to pull the trigger on a mid push and, well, Jampy was received or received it nicely. So... SMG to get mid control. Sunny flashed in and he confirms that there's no one particularly interested in fighting him close. There's a very widespread event. It could be any finish they desire. They don't have long info. But it's being passively held by Astralis. So no threat to Yampi just yet, despite Doto holding it very vigilant. They aren't taking any chances here, this T side. Flashing, gaining control. Same mid utility that we've seen them use to finish B. Did Sunny just walk in? God, it's only a scout. That is no fun for anyone. If he kills Zipex, they've got a Tunnel's Peak as well. And he's just going to park himself. It's not a fun fight for Zipex, but it does mean that there's more time for this split to start shaping up. And here comes the smoke. Sergey likely going to peak as Sunny gets close. This practically feels like another save round from Magisk and Device. 
It's great to see Ents not rushing this here, taking their time, re-smoking, and even sending that Mac-10 in for info. So Zipex will take one, but he's under pressure now. They're heading yeah. over to his But the smoke's going to fade CT. I mean, Device will be able to at least assist. Oh, they've re-smoked it. Alu drops it. They're coming from tunnels. Zipex got a lot to do here. Oh, and he peeks in to demise. The nade came straight following Jampy's bullet. Oh, on a good shot again. Device has been finding a couple on the cross here. No scopes, and this time through the wall. And just, by the way, no weapon at all. Only a USP, so his death will be quick. And Doto's got some trigger discipline here. He wants both of them. You can hear the scope. And that's the double. Good Lovely stuff. stuff. Wow, that was well handled there from Doto. Not I like just... how calm that was. Like, that was at no point rushed from Entz. And they had the advantage throughout. Make no mistake, Zipex hitting that shot definitely made things nice and competitive for a moment. He did, however, get overwhelmed by that tunnel's need and double push. So, Entz 3, Astralis nil, and only four frags to show for it. It's only been Device's occasional very late contributions on the B site, oh, and he's no. done it again. <laughs> Dupree's going to be <laughs> mad after that one. I'd love oh, to see dear. his reaction to getting banged through the doors two rounds in a row. Yikes, that is not an ideal start That's crazy, here. dude. He's 0-4. Dupree hasn't got to play the game yet. Look at this. There's a minute 35 left. They've lost a player, and they're operating with low utility. So it's heads-up Counter-Strike for Astralis with the remaining four. They have to win some fights, and someone needs to get a multi-kill. Yeah, who's going to step up to the plate? I can't believe Glaive's just managed to get a past the gaze of Aulu. A passive line held by the AWP enables a 2-2 split of our CTs. And here comes again. Same kind of pressure. They found that that mid to be split so far has been functional, but here's a change of pace. It's Glaive taking initiative, and he's actually managed to land a great dink early into Sergey. Converts on the re-peak, and now they have to overcome shorts, and Device has missed his shot. Trying to fall off. The flash evaded. They're swinging very fast. Device has got so many targets, he can't adjust, and Alu's found it. This is Entz. On to a flying start here on Dust2. Great stuff. That is a fantastic picture. Perfect split onto the site. Wasn't it? So much pressure on Device there. You could see he was not expecting them to push him with the AWP, and they did. And now it's just Glaive and Magus. Can, they have to save. Again. Like, you can play the percentages as much as you have to. I think they're trying to throw away that device AWP. Can we get a cam on the site there just to see how diligent they're being? So they're leaving, leaving one on the ramp. That means it will get blown away and not be able to get picked up. The other one in the hands of device was closer towards spawn. So if it got blown up, it could have actually trickled into CT spawn and the Astralis players may be looking to pick it up. All in all, the frag will be found from Magus, but that is the round for Ents. 4-0 to kick things off here today. Dupree here, mad. <laughs> Just as the smoke blooms and yeah, <laughs> some crazy Danish swear words. He's been lifting though. We saw the weights in the background. So yeah, no doubt. Maybe that testosterone at an all time high. And he's, you can see what this has done to the Astralis by like they are going to be in dire straits. Admittedly, this is going to be max loss. Oh, they're going all in. Yeah. The two save rifles, they can drop them, distribute. They will have everything they need other than the sniper rifle. It's going to be the uh, Fisher Price version. Baby's first scout. Now they act, their utility is actually better in this round than it was in the previous. So if we're looking at positives, there's one, but you're right. That scout for device is the difference between a couple of kills as they flood out swear, of shore and does a couple a, of tags. If a tag or a frag again on doors, that's going to be the salt fully, fully flowing through the veins of Dupree. Is he going to throw the smoke from spawn? His teammate will. Let's go, Dupree. You can get to the site. I believe in you. He's lucky. Whew, no one fired a shot. Alu's got other plans this time. Yampi does tag up Magis. Can he get away practically scar free? That worked out wonderfully. And he's forced the smoke out of long player very early on into the piece. Nice little lineup from Sunny as he does a Jump curve ball. Flick. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting little molly there. Side spin. And a boost. They've previously mollied and naded that spot, by the way. So it doesn't bode too well. You know, and sort of the capacity to force him out of that position, but they've set him up all the same. And this at the moment seems to be a gathering towards short. But with 70 seconds on the clock, Sergei's holding the tunnels push, Doto's holding the doors. This seems like a perfect default. Trying to maintain and remind that there's presence in B, keeps two CT's feet planted. And this is what I was talking about. Device is one of the best at holding this, but previously a run boost and a flash was enough to really force him off the line. Will they try the same or will the alley just dry? 
His left eye, it wouldn't favor Alu. He can't go for it. Instead, early utility towards the A site. A smoke flying in from Doto. That's going to cover off CT. And go for a double pump up here. Top mid. This is, that's, I think that's a CIS smoke we've seen thrown by Magix many times. And a second. Oh, Glaive, you're about to get cooked. Or not. There's no Molotovs unless Jampy's going to throw it. That's the Molly. Forces out the smoke and Glaive's got the line of sight. Big stuff. Crouching knows he's going to be hunted down and it gives him time for Magisk to peek in. Oh, it's a hurt locker. Taking it in turns to take contact and three bodies dropped by Ents. This is Astralis taking their first round. Yeah, it might be the save if they can. Zipex is locked in Alu. He's going to fall and now it's just Sergei holding onto this AK-47. He's going to get away to T-spawn and as seven seconds remain, he should be able to hold on to this orange AK. You didn't like this one yesterday, Alex. You still not a fan? It's got some Sergei stickers on it. Looks like it's a, a souvenir. It's a souvenir one. Yeah, like it's, you know, when they talk about complementary colors. Yeah. They don't often list orange and white. No. Like it's. They don't always land. They just, I mean, they can. Orange and black. Look at Astralis. They're making that work. But um, not my absolute favorite. Does look a little bit like vomit. You know, I was just thinking Yampy looks a little bit like um, the actor who plays Sherlock in the Netflix series. Uh, in the Netflix series? Uh, is that, is that the Netflix? The BBC? Yeah, oh, Benedict. the BBC series. Benedict Come on now, that's the British Broadcasting Centre series. I don't, I, well, I watched, it, I watched it on the Netflix. Yeah, well, they sold the rights, but we all know that's not a Netflix original. I that's never Sherlock said with Netflix Benedict Cumberflatch. All right, well. Let's see if Astralis were able to string two together because with a clean round, it means they still have all their goodies. And that was some great work with the crossfire of Glaive setting up Magus to be able to swing on in. But Zipax this time, he's on a bit of an island right now on his own towards Long. He will not have any help. And so we can see with the X-ray, there's three yeah. Ents players on the other side. But this island he's on is a proper exotic holiday destination. He doesn't want to give it up easily. He's hanging out by the palm tree. Oh, they're locking him in. Oh, uh, a lot of pressure for Zipex here. What have you got for us, mate? Trying to play anti-flash, but he wasn't ready for that. My God, the flash keeps him alive. His spray's sketchy. Finally finishes off Doto. Incendiary Wilf make things a bit hot and awkward for Yampi. He can't take the peak he wanted to, and he's still burning. He's burned down to two. That's big stuff from Zipex. Get off my land. Tags up Sergey down to 11 as well. Stralis making their announcement into this half. Glaive should find Sunny here. Yeah, that's quite the off angle. He can drop away from Alu, who's continuing to line up frags. They can turn this around. It's Sergei from Long. And Glaive, he's got Magisk in tow. There should be no way Sergei gets across with that HP. No way in hell. How strong is his arms here? Maybe Look at Alu? He's thrown it almost all the way across. Alu can grab it. Oh, he nice. Has. Okay, so they can make a round out of this. It's not a plan for long, so they will look for the frag. Sergei's hoping to catch Glaive's hunt, but that's a big frag. Now a one versus three handed Alu's way. He's getting sprayed, pressured, pushed, and a jump <laughs> shot from Glaive. Really keeping the thumb screws on. Pressure being un un unable to control it. It's triple kill from Glaive puts us in two. Are they going double orbs? Doesn't look to be the case. So. Salvaging one for device, going to rock the single AWP setup here. We do see Dupree pick up a secondary AWP on the CT side of Astralis, but Ents are taking an early tactical timeout, and I do like to see this. Their money, it's a bit all over the place here. You can see that Sergey can afford, Alu can get the AWP as well, but the other three members, they might need, uh, well, some Windex there for Sergey's camera, first and foremost, but uh, to force buy in with Tech Nines, Galils, maybe some SMGs. As I assume Saw's doing all the talking right now, because Sonny was very, very quiet there. Yeah, I mean, this is quite an exciting prospect that you do get to just have a completely, totally new voice in the squad. And one that is extremely in touch with the game. He was just a player. He was just playing as the in-game leader. So he is fresh. It's off. the same calls without the stress and the distraction of gameplay. Yeah, the, the one issue is he can't put his body on the line. So maybe areas he will need to micromanage a little bit more. But this is just the early stages of this new project for Ent. So I'm excited to see if they can bring their players back to stardom as they're onto the Deagles for round number seven. Yeah, my eyes are still firmly affixed to Sergey. If I can have a couple, of, just a couple of maps where I'm like, here, here he is. Yeah, it was, it was such an exciting prospect, especially for a youngster. And then it just feels like he's I thought he off was, a bit of a cliff. He was right there to be, you know, second in command to most exciting players of 2019 alongside yeah. Zaiwu. And then it just didn't manifest. Very exciting, but Sergey. At the moment, been kept very honest throughout the six-month window. Can we go back to Yampy Rush? 
Is this your Benedict Sasquatch what do you reckon? comparison? Yeah, you reckon it's not, it looks like not far off. A little bit? Yeah. A little bit. Benedict come quack. Two, three, Ooh. yet to frag. Yikes, I didn't notice that. No, nor I. They can go for a set piece onto A here, and these deagles against an orc towards mid long, they could actually sing right now. This is perfect for Ents. One of the best decisions they could make with their buy. Give me another nade. Dupree's got one. Bonk. That's better. That's really hurt. Oh, look at Ents. Shattered and committing. The flash, but tucked into Goose, and they've thrown out one of their own. They are trying their very best to delay the advance, and this will be the multi-kill. Oh, they had the flash, and there's nothing Zipex can do. Glaive's gone down as well. Just with Deagles, Ents have access. They can get the bomb down. Oh dear, a miss from device enables Sergei to plan, and they still have the numbers advantage, extended by Sunny. Peeks in, takes Dupree down, zero and five for Dupree. Finally, device's AWP on long does find a body. They are low. But time's on their side now. Alu's even got a flash. Where does it go? Will it find Device? Magisk is walking up the ramp. Alu's trying to control that, and Magisk has managed to hit the shot. Getting awkward now. Kit on Device, pushing in. Hard deagle shots for Sergei, trying to delay. He hits it. Taking down Device makes it winnable. A fake. Maybe Magisk won't be ready for Dodo. He's been spotted, trying to rot the clock, and unfortunately, the kit is there, and the time is two. Well, that was a good round from Ents. They did a fantastic job of getting the bomb down. They made it really costly and it was close. If Doto Just had the crouched. awareness that the defuse wasn't actually being committed to, may have even been able to steal that one away from Magus because he took a last minute look over towards Long. I'm not sure if he was looking for the kit or if he actually thought he was towards Long, but regardless, just able to get across. And Dupree, the man on your screen, still struggling. I want to see him get active because on Dust 2, one where you need the brawlers, he can have a lot of impact. On this retake, if you're an AWPer at home, I want you to take note of what you saw Device do. He's come up, he knows that he's gonna get into a couple of close range duels, and he's changed from the AWP to the M4. That's some key <laughs> stuff from a AWPer, you know, who, who actually knows yeah. the percentages of the game. Okay, fine, but then you've got a Woxic who will keep the AWP, and then he'll he's hit- a little bit different. He'll hit three no-scopes and a, maybe a 360 just for good measure. It's not too many AWPers who plan 364 sensitivity. So, yeah, I suppose uh, that gives him a unique uh, perspective <laughs> of what the AWP is capable of. That's his cool curveball. Okay, so he's jumping as he's releasing that. So it's he's trying to land it in the corner. It hasn't quite got the deep spread he was hoping for, but it does fully deny. And he swings for info. Is this a boost? You don't see this one too often. Yeah, Navi rock this with simple from time to time. So if they try and crouch under the standard line of sight from the Fifi line, they'll be dead. The flash is good. Oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. They back away and bait the nade. Step one complete. Counter Strike, it's a multi stage flow chart. So three, same default. Dota responsible for the long push. Zipex hasn't given it to him once. And the dribble smoke B. Now, I wonder if that just. Forces out the utility of Dupree. A single incendiary is not going to really be the achievement Sergei was hoping for. Early B finishes. More utility being exchanged. And Jampy is going to be smoking off CT. But that's an incendiary. How many smokes do the CTs have? None. There's nothing to hold them at bay here, Chad. 30 seconds. I think Ents have still got enough time to make this A take work. It's going to be coming down to execution. Device. Not going to be caught by the flash. He's jiggled it nicely. And he's actually retake. playing retake. So watch how this one works. They've got three on long. And a flash for the first look. Bomb planted by Jampy. Three retaken from long. Magus can do pre retaking from CT. I don't like their chances here, Astralis, but they do. This is how they like to play. This is a conscious decision. Sergei can ruin everything with his timing through that CT flank, though. And Dupree knows it. Pushing into the site, the flashes are good. It does stop Alu from contributing. Glaive needs a double, gets it. Jampy caught. Doto tucked in on Gandalf. Alu Molotov off. That's the timing on Sergey. He only gets the one. Maybe insufficient. Now very disconnected from the bomb. They need to clear Gandalf. That's Glaive's responsibility. In the smoke of the nade. Defuse not coming in yet. Magisk is on it. Alu's responsibility is to knock him off. And he hasn't got time. He does just in the nick of time. One, maybe even half a second separating that from a round win from Astralis. And Device is going to go down with the bomb. Crucial, crucial stuff from Ents. That puts the fifth on the board. They deserved that. They worked hard for that. And Astralis couldn't quite pull it off. Yeah, you could see Ents have read that very well. They've done their prep work there, knowing that there's not going to be too much of a retake coming through Cat, staying close towards mid doors to deny that, and then flanking on out. Dupree dies again without any impact. Now, this here is where I expected them to pick up that duel a little bit quicker onto Sunny. The fact that they weren't able to convert when he was in no man's land and multiple players taking that duel, I think was the undoing because it was only Glaive who had impact on the retake. And then easy as you like, simple able to, simple? Alu able to melt them from the cap position.
Fist bumps. Looks like they're in the end's office, Sonny and Yampi, as Australis will take their second time out already. Now, you can see Device has enough to buy back into the AWP. Magus has opted to go for the Famous. And here's how we've gotten to the scoreline of 5-3. to three. The pistol with the conversion and the first gun round in the back pocket events. Australis, once they had another buy through a couple of saved weapons on the board in round number five, have been able to convert three on the trot. And now Ents have bounced back. But if they can convert yet another, Ents will have to... Sorry, Astralis will have to be down to an eco. Different setup from both teams and getting some long control with a smoke on the corner. Two in blue bin, though. It's likely they get Molotov. They've smoked off long, so kind of locking them in. Unless they want to use that smoke to escape. I like this from Ents. They're staying very dynamic here with their pace changes. They're punishing with the defaults. That's two done by the book and... It is, isn't it? It's very textbook. This is a very big duel right here. Device looking for Alu. Fires off a shot and reveals the AWP is middle. That was the change up the Astralis went to, but immediately, look at their response. Get that AWP that just fired a shot mid-doors, scoping long, hoping to exploit a gap. And well, Ents, despite having long control, are unwilling to contest just yet, perhaps wanting to set Alu up first for that AWP on AWP action. They can Navi this here. Yeah, they don't have to rush it. That's the flash for the peak, and Alu is perfectly and totally set up to take down the device. Or oh, what? That was on him. In his hip. I don't understand. Trying to punish all the same. The bouncy Dane gone. Jampy's found him. And Sonny was the ton's lurk. Now he might be able to punish this short presence. Glaive's there. So is Zipex. Alu distracting and fragging as well. Four on three. Ends of 30 seconds. They need to get that bomb across. Zipex's responsibility starting to become denial. And I'm not talking about the stages of grief. Get that bomb out of Sergei's hands and stop that plant. Magisk has arrived as well. Sonny's still playing a very, very dangerous game. Zipex is going to check him. Oh, he's been found. Good play from Zipex. He knew they saving. would be parking someone, but it is just in the essence of saving. Yeah, that's strange. I thought Astralis might go for it after that kill from Zipex. It felt like that was building to something. They were clearing to make sure that they didn't have to worry about a flank like in the previous so round. Yeah, that's that's where you would expect them to go with this, but it is the first half, and you tend to see a couple more saves out of the CT sides in the first half of play. When you get over to the second half, hence they run out of those kind of rounds when the game goes on and we're getting close into the more crunch periods. But this is going to be the sixth on the board for Ents and another one that they've done by the book. Uh, I There was a little bit of a play there that caught Device off guard, and that was Yampi putting his foot on the gas without any smokes, without any nades, without any trade potential to punish Device. And that kill right there opened up the A bomb site. So this was the shot you were talking about, not connecting. Yeah, I didn't get to watch it in the replay actually there, but... Might have been just through the corner of the wall. That might have been the problem. It's hard to, hard to tell with that angle. But Yampi was the hero of round number nine. And these save guns from Astralis with a loss bonus of 2,400 doesn't net them enough for a buy. It looks like it will be conservative. So everybody... Oh my god, Magus has gone down to Alu through the smoke. He is having a field day on this cross, Alu. He is. He's definitely got just the muscle memory. I mean, how many thousands of Dust2 games has he held that mid-cross? He's just got every single pre-fire and timing just formatted in his brain. Did Dupree get a kill yet? Alu's gone down. That's a big find from Device. When miss Stopping smoke. the search. Yeah, and a miss smoke doesn't really stop. Ooh, I was going to say Sunny from getting on the box, but he's been knocked off it by Zipex. Standing his ground in a headshot angle needed another stand and deliver from Astralis in pursuit of their fourth round here in round 10, first of the day. Dusty resents his pick and Device is playing with fire here. A very aggressive angle. Hasn't made a sound cue. And so completely and totally... A surprise if Sergei wants to turn this corner with a nade in his hands. He's just going to drop the dribble smoke. That will force the device forward. Okay. Down. Eliminated by device in the off angle. But here, come, here they come on long. They're not expecting him. Not at all. It needs to be the double. And it is. Wraps up the round. Puts it all under lock and key. And grabbing a double orb set up for the 11th round of play. Device gets some credit there. But of course, wrapped up nicely with the double stack long. Alu opening things up with a disadvantage for Astralis, just timing, 151. Pull the trigger, Chad. Yeah, he's getting uh, some real luck on his side here today. Now, sure, it's intuition. Good orpers have to have the correct crosshair placement, but to hit those shots consistently like Alu has done today, that's some wild scenes. The double ops will come out. Astralis, Christmas came early. Back towards long we go, lots of flashes. 
Hey, Glaive. Doing his very best to... Oh, Sergey. he's just walked out long, finally. Yampi hunting, and he's hit the deagle shot necessary. That was a $700 pistol against a $7,000 investment. Now, the bomb can go down B, and Astralis, you know how they play these. I can practically say with conviction that they are not going to go for this seven ends T rounds on their map pick. I love the pace change there. You can just see how punishing it was. And that was a massive risk from Sergey. They didn't want long control. They wanted the frags and they wanted to keep those long players busy so that cap push can come on through. And exactly that happened as now to priest still yet to find a kill has to hold on to the AWP. Magus is making sure they can't rotate through and chase from T spawn, but Sonny, he's not far away. The bomb's only halfway ticked and it depends on how much Ents want to invest in applying these weapons out of the Astralis hand. They're going to have enough to buy in the next round. So Sunny thinks better of going for this. Doesn't want to give up any of their T-sided weaponry. But the latest stages here in the first half is seven have now been secured. So seven to four in favor of Ents here on their map choice. And they were the ones who were gifted the T-side because Astralis chose to start on the CT side. And this is great stuff from Yampi again, just really punishing with the space and hitting some nice shots. Yeah, I mean, that, that round is forgotten about in an instant if Device just locks down short and we move on. But Yampi hit the deagle shot necessary and everything else spiraled. So lots of smokes out of spawn here. They've thrown two of their five. Well, it's a four-man lean. They've had to respect this long play. And meanwhile, they're hitting the B bomb site. Oh, if Device goes down, call. it's over. Sora's made a great call here. Now, Device has dropped his smoke. And that long stack is starting to second guess themselves. I think as soon as they saw the AWP on the bomb site, they've had to reconsider smoke to lock them out as well. And now they've all dropped back through spawn. So that was the plan. Sell the long fake, see if you're dealing with a lean, which they were, and then punish the B side. But, well, device home. They reconsider and they just go back into a default spread. And this is very standard play now. Sunny going with the door smoke again. He's going to look for cat control. Corner, oh. oh, I didn't get his magical spin. Oh, and it's just imploded in the air. So no Molotov there to help with crowd control as we'll have to use a flash in lieu of that. It still appears that the B lean is where Ents are thinking. There's 55 seconds left on the clock. The bomb is in lower tunnel. Sunny showing that short presence now. Nobody over towards long whatsoever. And they'll have to deal with a passive hold on the B bomb site from Astralis. One, the AWP player tucked in towards the back of the side of device has just rotated over towards window and Dupree yet to frag over towards car. This would be a time for him to go get a couple and he's actually whiffed the jump there. So his sound cue may have been heard. They're coming in. Okay. So Dupree gets his first frag. Needed that. And they're not going to be given a second chance. Sergei's double kills on these entries have brought him at least these two rounds. Round 12. Flying the ends flag once again, every time Astralis try and get a good grab, grip on this ends T side. It's a double kill from someone. Sergey this time provides it. Chad, I was looking recently. Mm. Have you ever heard of spontaneous human combustion? No. It's like this weird concept where like humans just randomly blow up. Really? Yeah. How would we know if that's ever happened? Well, apparently... That this phenomenon, this alleged phenomenon has appeared in literature um, for many, many years. Like people talking about it like it happened a lot. Yeah, but um, religion. Have you ever seen anyone too. blow up? No. Spontaneous human combustion refers to the death from a fire originating without an apparent external source of ignition. So yeah, just, just want to warn you, if you see anyone, you know, blowing up yeah. on the street, That's what it you is. now know to call it, it's SHC. That's SHC. Spontaneous human combustion. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Just want, I just want you to be aware. Yeah, well, it's obviously going to be very, very important in everyone's day to day. Yeah, you know, it's it, it, it's it, what is life if you're not learning every day? Or exploding, apparently. Or exploding every day. Okay, Astralis, they need to get a couple more on the board here, or they're not going to be too happy with how the first half of this series has gone whatsoever. Enter flying the flag and looking good while doing it. Alu down middle. Xbox Smoke has now obscured his vision. Oh, I thought he was pushing further down, but he's holding back for any... Lucy Goosey, Astralis cap pushes. And once again, the default spread. They need to find out where these rifles are. And Glaive's indication that there's one over towards middle. Zipex is locking down so long. Sergei's got a friend this time for his tunnel's adventure. And Magisk, I can't believe he didn't go down there. He was holding the right line. Crosshair was good. If they were to find a B peak, you know they would flood in. But Magisk given so much responsibility with just the sidearm there. He did get spotted and tagged. It's forced Glaive to rotate and respect it. So a 3-2 split, digging into the sights. It's old school. 
This is an interesting setup over towards A right now. They're banking on the fact that Ents go for their standard short control, and that's indicated by Dupree holding onto this HE. What's the cue, though? Do you get a sound cue, or you just use your, your spidey senses? Traditionally, they've been throwing that flash in the molly, yeah. but here they're going silent, so Dupree's actually found a new little hiding hole. Is he going to push long, or is he going to... He might have to. They need information at some point. Yeah, 40 seconds, you know nothing. Those two B players are going to be wasted resources and saving if... Zipex and his saved M4 don't do a lot of heavy lifting. Does warn him off. Trying to hit some sort of crazy pre-fight. He's got four, four, four people staring at him. What's he supposed to do? Survive is step one. And, oh, he baits them in nicely for device, but he loses his life. Doto, a first test, and it's a fail. A big red F on his report card because Device has managed to do good damage. Tags up another, but Alu bails him out. Now the bomb can go down. Dupree has an M4 just within his grasp. But Alu's holding it. A miss. Can't punish. Dupree swings up the ramp. He's got Glaive now arriving from CT and he's taken a crucial frag onto Sunny. Okay, Sergey making things a lot more manageable. Dupree, quiet so far. Now he's got to play around a smoke dropped by Alu of his own design. And Alu's just hiding in his own smoke. What a rascal. He knows time is his best friend here. And so Alu just basically creates a secondary wall for Dupree to respect. Dupree doesn't have a kit either. At least he denies the AWP on Alu, I guess. He can't win the round. Yeah, small consolation considering Ents' cash right now, and that's nine rounds. I guess probably going to get it from the explosion. Might get lucky with it. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Where did it go? Ooh, that's a good question. He's running, 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 running. Hey, there we go. Sergey lifts it up, drops it over, and Ents are looking good. They are looking very, very good here. I love the pace changes. Their defaults are looking clean. They're playing off of each other well, seeing Yampi going in first and giving freedom on the entry. Yeah, he hunted nice. that. He's unrelenting as well. It doesn't seem like he backs down, and I think that's uh, always something you need in an entry fragger. Hmm. It's cool to see them making that boot camp work live from Finland. And now, hang on, long. Previously, we've seen Astralis acknowledge that they have to. What the hell? Smoke on a smoke on a smoke and a double. Not quite spray down. Zipex finds Sergey. They're getting naded and fragged. And this one feels and spells trouble. Doto on that blue bin. He's got Molly's galore. And this one's a massacre. Astralis waving their flag very viciously. And well, Alu unfortunately ex exchanging dinks. Doesn't favor the AWP in the repeak. And they will recover a double AWP setup. Now, finishing the sixth round is important for Astralis. A 10-5 half certainly sounds a whole lot more disastrous than a 9-6. Yeah, 9-6, I feel like they would have salvaged it and then they get pistol and we're back on. Could even be tied up. 10-5, you get the pistol, then you're forced, and then already on 11, it gets awkward. Definitely feel like this one's a crucial finish for Astralis. And it does look like... They picked up the double AWP, right? But they're not using they, it? They've thrown it away. Okay, interesting. Dupree doesn't want to operate with that. He's actually over towards... Where is he? He's over towards B. There you go. Oh, interesting. I really thought they would have run that double AWP. So. Maybe he's going to keep it for uh, the mid round if he needs it. That'll be interesting. He's flushed on over. Seen no information. They put Zipex on B, so that's a change as well. And look at this. Astralis are getting aggressive through Catwalk. They want to take the fight two ends here, and they're fed up of being executed on. And one way to bolster your cat defense, well, have at least two players with a third overseeing. So watch oh, Vegas. He has a flash in case they need it. That nade oh. is perfect. Look at all the damage on Sunny and Yampi. <gasps> oh, okay, Device. You are trapped here, and he's got the first. Perhaps they're trapped with him, and that's a perfect flash and a re-aggression. Astralis, it turns out, bringing the fight to Wentz, not letting them have the execute they so desire, is paying off. And it, oh my god, Alu, that was aggressive. He knew he had to take a chance, and the chance has come up a little short. Talking of. That's exactly where Doto and Sergey plan to finish. They've got the lineups. They'll be dropping a smoke for the wall. Maybe a strafe down CT. How brave are you, Doto? They want to get the bomb down. Device flashes for Magist. Look, he doesn't even give it to them. He goes on the second. Ouch. Perfect stuff. Perfect finish. Astralis, do clean it up. It's 9 6. Ends have the lead and convincing stuff so far from our first look at the new finish roster.
They say that we're too young, I hate it They say we're being dumb, so let them talk We're living on the run, we'll make it you and I I know that we're not sober, but shut up and pull me closer, yeah Well, 9-6 on the half of Dust2 ends his pick, and we're getting our first look at Saw from Havu, in-game leader to coach transition, as well as Dodo, one of their players, surprised to be getting the call up. We spoke to him in the pre-match interview. Well, he's hanging with the big boys now, and he's managed to find himself a very reasonable middle-of-the-pack fragging total. Zonic, coach of Astralis, of course. He's going up against the greats here, Chad. And they've come up trumps. They've got nine rounds on their T side of Dust2. I don't think they're going to be complaining about that by any stretch. No, I'd be very happy with that. And it was quite clean in the way that they did it. A few rounds that they lost were just through some pace changes and unable to get the opening frags. Spelt disaster. But if they can pick up the pistol round here, we might be looking at a next victory. Zipex takes a duel, cops a bit of damage. Now want to fight more. Flash over and away they go. Yeah, you have to fall back and, oh, lucky to duck, duck in. Look at all the nades that Astralis have invested with. That's three players who have utility within this round. True, three. No Kevlar vest, and Doto is going to get smoked by his teammates. He gets to stick around here. This should really slow things down. They shouldn't push the issue right now, knowing that that smoke has been dropped. And we can see that Astralis is still operating with three of their own. If they lose some members, that is not how they want this one-to-one -one ravel. Oh, wow, one smoke to deter. That's a full cancel made by Astralis. They're going all the way down. They're probably going to have to stare at spawn. Smoke Xbox, that works oh, I too. Like this. That's going to deny a lot of info. Okay, so they know that there's going to be so much pressure applied to Dodo, who is still stuck towards car. Device has trapped him on in. He has the P250 in pit. Magus and Device have the smokes for the cross if they decide to go late long. But right now, it looks like they want to walk up Cat. Oh, that's a lot of info. Bomb spotted in middle. Allo to be tested. Oh, Magus. Magus, careful. Gets away by dropping his mid smoke. It Gaps does mean that there is a CT stack from Ents here on A. And Doto trying to find that long presence. Glaive does pepper them. No Kevlar doesn't stop him. Alu does. So does Doto. He's found the long lurk. Cross, crossing into the site. Doto needs another. Plays a bit further back. Yampi coming in from short once. Have duel on Glaive and he's got it. Oh, what a shot from Yampi. Not for the first time. And now Magisk. Lots of pressure. It's not the weapon for the job. And he has struggled to find Yampi now. Doto's very low, so the Glock has potential, but he's finished it off nicely with a P250. Ents 
getting the double digits they so desire. And it's off the pistol that Astralis invested a lot into. I mean, you could see they tried long. They had the utility for a change up. They did. They tried it all. Yeah, a lot of that call was on the fly. And you can just see how skittish it was as they went out mid doors. Megas almost went down. And when he dropped his smoke, there was actually a gap. So it didn't keep them invested to worrying about the mid to B. Ali was able to come back and get two kills as they were flooding out bridge. And Doto dealing with device towards pit. That was the frag of the round. Because if device stays alive in that pit position, the rotation is only possible through CT and short, and that is likely an Astralis round. So we were talking about if they get this pistol round. Well, they have, and things are looking good for NT. They just have to convert against this force He's fight. Got such a typical CS player's view behind device. It's just a big suitcase. Yeah. That's it. It's yeah. just an empty room and a suitcase. Kind of like we're turtles. Yeah. We keep all of our stuff in that shell. Yeah, I mean, like, it's an analogy that I'm not, like, in love with or plan to use again. But well, yeah, I'll refine it. Yeah. We'll try again tomorrow. There's always room for improvement, Chad. Okay, this scout, if it gets any tags, is going to soften up these players for the Deagles. But the AK-47 is where I really want to keep my eye. Zipex and Glaive, they're operating with the heavy machinery right here. First, they have to push Alu back from mid-doors. He has an M4. Not spam, not mollied, not dealt with. Sound cues are heard. Alu can relay all this information to his team, and now they've actually smoked off mid, so he can drop back and reposition. Good nade. Mm, nice. A little bit shy. Very evaded by Astralis, and they are working with just those two rifles, so a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Glaive and Zipex to convert and find those opening kills that get the round roll rolling in their direction. Now, with all that mid and short presence, you're hoping that you can isolate one player towards long, and they can do so. The issue here is Dodo jiggle peeking. As soon as he's under pressure, he can fall back towards the site. Oh, and he's left a gap. This could be it's, a very big problem. It's all timing. <laughs> he's fully given up long. Yeah, they've really bitten on the short. It's, uh, the fact it's short here. Wow. Okay, Doto. They've got smokes for the cross as well. They just walk up long now. They're going to have a very good pace. Glaive knows he's got a gap here. Look at this. He's saying, keep moving, boys. We've got a gap. Doto suddenly realizing the error of his ways. Sunny winning the duel on short gives them a lot more space. The rest of Astralis all coming from this one direction. They can focus their attention that way. Doto under scrutiny. Five seconds. You need to deny the plant. There's no time for it, is there? Just in time. Dupree can't be stopped. And the round goes oh. on. Dupree just in the nick of time. Gets it down. Trades keep going. Device now finding one with the scout. Put Zipex to clutch up. The minister has found the headshot necessary. Alu going down. He's expecting the swing up ramp and Div Cool, calm. Looking to collect three bullets. One bullet is all that Zipex needs. The last bullet from the Kalashnikov. And he lives up to the prefix. The Clutch Minister has done it again. Huge stuff there from Zipex. Look what they needed that, man. They really needed that. He's been out of the game for some time. Had his debut back with the team over there in Blast and continuing to clutch up here in Beijing. One bullet to spare. I know we've been segregated, but if you want to continue a bit of a storyline, Astralis are the defending champions of IEM Beijing, beating 100 Thieves last year in a best of five. They pants them. They made them look silly. And so did Zipex just there. A huge clutch and a huge oh. opening. They need that, but they're yeah, definitely But look low. at them. My God. Three members of this squad are now within that P250 scary stage, especially a Deagle. I mean, one bullet will is all Yampi needs to hit for three members of Astralis. So this is far from a guarantee, despite the early casualty of Sunny. And Long becomes a scary prospect at this stage because of the scout. Yeah, good point. Oh, I didn't even consider how powerful Ali's scout can be now. He'll re-pick as well. Ali won't be afraid to go for those fights. That's the type of player he is with the sniper rifles. Magus might want to consider getting with his team and trading that MAC-10 out for an AK-47 so he can operate with something a little bit more potent. Device has done exactly that. He's dropped the scout over to Dupree. But if Magus goes down on full HP just with a MAC-10 while jumping and trying to be bait, ooh, ooh, that could be a problem. Multiple Molotovs towards short. Yampy's locked in. Glaive gets a kill. And now Astralis, they're cleaning up the mess. Early dropping off. Perfect. This is perfect now. It means that the Orpa, well, the Scouter in this case, can't hang around top A and harass towards long. So they should get the cross, but there's a bit of a gap here. Strong arms. Oh, not strong enough. The healthiest member picked it up. Thank God. So Astralis, though they are wounded, battered, bruised, bleeding, they don't lose a single man and yeah. puts the eighth on the board. And this is the unconfirmed damage that we're talking about. They can guess that the nades would have landed in bedroom and done damage, but how much? I think if you knew that there were three players, four players even, who were below 40 HP, you might actually consider it worth going to take away a few more rifles. But without that information, without that being known, they want to hold on to their goodies and keep it into the next. But Zipex 
How hungry are you going to get, mate? You were the hero to get Astralis a force by victory. You don't be the villain by giving away that AK. So he's just going to secure T-spawn, and everybody's going to hold on to what they have. That means in the next round, Hence is still going to be dangerous. That scout is such a problem, and especially in the hands of Alu. Device, final seconds, and Dodo takes him down. That is a bit of an issue. MAC-10 can be dropped across. 5-7 can be held onto. And that means four players on Ents now will have something upgraded. I wonder if Sunny wants to invest at all here. Dodo's picked up a smoke. That can be used as they cross for mid to B, so Astralis don't know exactly how many players are defending that site. And it looks like they're going for the stack, but it's a flub smoke. Oh, dearie me. That is a pedestrian error right there. You hate to see it. Maybe nudged in spawn by a teammate. But some quick smokes towards Long have given control to Astralis. And, well, they picked the wrong site. They've gambled the wrong way. And Alu, unless you can go absolutely huge here, my friend, I think this might be an Astralis round. Okay. Well, that's a good start. One kill. How many more can he get? Continuing to power down on Dupree, who's having a very rough affair here on Dust2. They made it into the site. And they're coming through the smoke. Yampi on his own there, going for a bit of a risk. Gives Zipex a freebie to even things up 4v4. But more damage being inflicted to device. Just tickled on down. On planted, and now Ents are just looking for damage. Yeah, and that damage is coming from device, unfortunately. Not the... Uh fight they were looking for. Sunny, however, reveals he's got the scout now, and Magic's likely going to get finished off long range from that P250. It's all just consolation prizes, though, for the double S's. Sergei, Sunny, both lucky to find themselves with anything at this point in time. Okay, Sergei. You don't need that, mate. You can go for a little bit more aggression here as Zipex will finish him off. And that'll be round number nine for Astralis. Whoop. Okay, so this is a big one. This is a turning point in the game for Astralis here. If they're able to pick up round number 20, not only will they tie things up at 10-10, they'll put the question in Enter's mind of, hey, we don't have enough money to operate with a buy. Do we go for a save if we lose the bomb site within the early stages? Bit of a face palm there from Alu, but let's get this one underway as the glass cannon from the man in question. And Sergei's going to cop a tag this time, so giving them a bit of a taste of what they were dishing out. Oh, clear indication out middle. Glaive taking a bit of a risk early here. Two big picks, so Astralis basically just stealing away this round. It felt like a standard default coming through, and Ents went to contest it on two different fronts, and they've lost both of those fights. Yampi, he's going to get legged as well, so this is not looking good for Ents. Oh, through the door. Big tag, but Glaive finishes him off, and now it looks like they want to go for a B-side finish. Yeah, well, I can't blame them. Sergey, you've been right down the middle of the pack, bro. Let's see if you can fend off an entire angry Astralis squad. I mean, finding Glaive would solve so many of his problems, and he has got a perfect timing now. <gasps> yeah, that's a shame. Didn't have it in his head that he could already be popping out the tons, and so any chance of suppressing this is gone. Dupree's ahead of their own smoke, and Astralis are making this T side. If you've just joined for the second half, you may be wondering how the first half did go. We did have a 9-6, and now Astralis have closed that gap completely. It took them four rounds. Of course, that's how math works, just off the back of the pistol, second round force, and then running with it. Haven't seen him drop around since. Four consecutive for the Danes and that CT side of Dust2, Chad, it does seem like the more time passes, the more Dust2 I watch, oh, the more it can feel like the CT side is the one at the disadvantage. You just have so much ground to cover and so few resources to do so, especially when the money's being kept so honest. I mean, you just have to swallow your, this bitter pill here. It's like, well, defend, I guess. Yeah, uh, even with the door switch, it's still very difficult to retake in a map like this, and one where the pace changes and spawn base CS for the T's actually plays in quite heavily here. That kill from Dupree was the final one they needed, and that was the final one of the round as they've denied anything being carried across. Now, you're right, it can be costly because it's a map where double orps is always a solution, but one of the most expensive solutions we have within Counter-Strike. 
Lots of fans at home tuning in here today. Lounging in the Lazy Boy. Haven't watched Counter-Strike like that in many a year. As uh, Ents will have to opt for just this pistol limping. Now we do have a little bit of a recount here of the frags. We've got 14 for Alu, 12 for Sergey, 11 for Yampi. We have nine for Doto and seven for Sunny. Astralis, well, Zipax leading the charge, 18 kills for him. It's like he wasn't even missing. Didn't even take that time off. Yeah, where, where was this boy? A little bit of an NOA stack towards mid doors there. So they might be able to catch a player from Astralis lurking up cat. It depends on if it's with the timer of the smoke or not. Or if Dupree decides to just frag them. Oh, it's going to be the ladder. So Dupree and Glaive getting the two openings and this should be another round on the board for Astralis. It really feels like they're taking control of the game now. That should have been the end of things, but now pistol frags fill the feed. It's closer than we've seen Ents in some time and only with the sidearms, but the bomb is making its way. Zipex has gone for the long marathon. He's, oh, he's so paranoid. It's actually going to work out nicely for Ali because he's cautious of tunnels. Dupree's been called to clear it. And that does mean that Alu's got a bit of time to work on his own plan. Is there a weapon around here? Probably on Xbox, right? Should be able to find something. Uh, it's an orb. Okay, well. Oh, okay. Well, I got a weapon. It. He's going for it. This would be classic Alu. Most players would save in this situation. Alu wants to get stuck in. There's a likely close corner to check. Zipex plans to swing, so his reactions will have to be quick after that first fight. But, oh, sound cute. <laughs> and just as he pulls out the nades, nightmare fuel. Oh, well, he could have oh. saved that AWP, but I guess he's going to buy one anyway. 6.1 in the back pocket, and maybe now we can see the impact because Yampi's bought into an AWP as well. And this is definitely a very potent defense, as you can see here, just how this one kicked off. Glaive and Dupree with both entry kills towards middle. It got dicey for a moment as there was pistol frags coming in from ends all over the map. But handled well. And another round picked up. Astralis with a clear lead. As now they do have to deal with this double op setup of Yampi and Alu. This is one of the interesting parts events. Something that I'm quite excited to see. And there is Device's first look at the long stack. Bye bye, Sunny. Two more where that came from. Forcing out some early CT utility. But uh, how are the opening kills starting to shape up? Have you been Ooh. keeping track? Because I can't help but feel that... We have seen a big Astralis resurgence in that statistic category. Don't forget, Alu started off with all those door frags. It was definitely Ents finding the openings, but here on the T side, the Danes have definitely taken control. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look right now since we've come into the second half. Astralis managed the opening kill on pistol. They lost that round. In the Zipex clutch, Ents had the opening frag as well. And then since then, it's almost looked like one-way traffic for Astralis. Yampi with so much responsibility here, Alex. This is such a difficult He's task. got it, dude. No worries. I'm not even worried. Yampi just needs to hit some crazy quick scopes. And uh, okay, Glaive has found him. Didn't even get the smoke in the feed there. So I think he just got victim by the gray screen. And this is where Dust 2 fast becomes my least favorite map. Yeah, alongside of Inferno for me, I'm with you there. Yep. Once you see these bomb sites getting taken and then we just sit here and we wait for 40 seconds as both teams have a bit of a stalemate, they just go, okay, you save. We'll win the round. We don't want to expend anything. We're going to hold on to our goodies. We're going to let our bank balance start to build. But hold up, Zipex, you're getting a bit frisky here. He's locked them in towards long. So two players it's now that Glaive's very here. Very punishing. They've got 3,400 into the next. It will not be the rifles and orbs that they currently have equipped. And that is a defensive smoke that confirms the suspicions. Ah. Boost? Yeah, I wonder if that gives him a, a, a angle over the door. Should be able to try and spam here at least. Bye, oh, Dodo. Oh, Dodo, Bye. man. Oh, brutality. And look what that's done. So, Sergei can drop a rifle and then buy one of his own. <sighs> it's an MP9. That's all he's willing to, nice. to buy with. So, let's have a look. How much could he... Oh. Ah. Ah. So, do you, we saw it from Jampy's POV. He saw nothing. He saw nothing. <laughs> so, just, just in case you were wondering why sometimes it feels like you, you, you got bullshitted. 
uh, it's usually because you're walking through a smoke. Yeah, and obviously if you're in that smoke, you're trying to use it to shroud your position. Well, as you come out of it, they have the advantage. And Glaive punishing in such a big way that Ents have even had to take a bit of a timeout to talk through their options here. Because if this game runs away with them and the only round they picked up was Pistol, losing from that point onwards to the Zipex 4K, uh, they're not going to be too happy about it. As we can now reflect on the frags for Astralis. So Zipex leading the charge with 19 and you can see that Glaive is doing a fantastic job. 18 for him, Device finding impact in the second half with the AWP hitting tags. 15 kills, 12 for Dupree, who's now well and truly in the game after a very slow start. And Magisk with 10. Feels like we're back to business as usual here as Astralis have control. Oh, for Alu, still threatening. We've seen a bit of a half bite from Ents. And another opening. Zipex almost able to punish. We'll get away with his life and... That pressure at least has been applied towards long. Yeah, Jampy has met Device's Orb, but not for the first time. Just biding his time on that. And look at the space being taken instantaneously upon his demise. Dotto, only an MP9. Not fun in terms of winning a 1v1 against an AK. And that is an easy frag for Dupree. Two frags. Again, Ents just starting to get picked apart. Double smoke on the CT cross, or at least the one, that's the high one. So yeah, now double smokes have bloomed and Sergey hears them coming tunnels. He's hoping that he can catch them on the jump up and really good moves from Sergey. Get another and he might even turn this round on its head. Oh, Device hunts him over, leaping with the Tech 9, a double kill in a very different capacity. But Alu, yeah, he's got to do what Alu does best. Well, they're Using the site, saving as Zipex is going to go for the fight. The flash will catch him. Oof. And he does find it, denying the AWP and denying the dreams. They'll force the full rebuy on Ents. And this is at the closing stages of Dust2 and Ents' map pick. This was Ents in control until Astralis head over to the T side. And this one's clearly a very well laid plan. Yeah, so there's been a couple of big openings in the last few rounds here. And if we just reflect there on what you were discussing, uh, we've seen Device. He's currently sitting at, I think, four and one in terms of opening jewels. But Dupree's won three of his. Glaive's won three. Zipex has won three. Things are looking very good for Astralis here. They look to close this one out fast towards long. We go again and over towards Pit. You're not even going to make it, Sergey. Take it down. Dupree in tandem with Glaive. Finish him off. And long control is now for Astralis as they look to close this one out in style. With all this space, with all this territory, I'm just sure they put the brakes on now. I mean, they wait for Ents to go for an aggressive push. Yeah, they don't have to do anything else. Ents came into this half with nine, and they could leave this half with ten. I feel this is similar scenes to what we saw happen with Astralis earlier in the year, Alex. There was a tournament, I, I believe it was... Oh, go on, MP. Damn, Magis is going to be a bit frustrated after that one. The AWP has just walked willy-nilly all the way. He's actually going to maybe catch Zipex. Oh, I love this. This is quite the push. I can't believe Zipex is tucked in in anticipation of it, but he can't stay there forever. He's hoping to catch him in the black of the scope. No sound cue provided by Yampi. Zipex, this is all about a question of Counter-Strike timing, folks, and he has peeked out, oh. catching Yampi unawares. I can't believe it. And now they can walk into B. The B player's so pushed up, Ali's not even holding it. Now he's going to knife out into the side. A miss. Maybe Ali's got a chance. Maybe. Flash is good. He tucks in. He's being pushed very heavily, and Device has found it eventually. It's a chaos. The throw to the B. B. Bomb's going A. All good for them. He's even <laughs> spotted the shadow. He knows Doto, the last man, is on the wrong side of the map. This has been a bit more um, fluidity to some of the play from Astralis. You know what's absolutely wild? There is the rotation was drawn towards the B site, and then Dupree, as he's crossing long, kills one of the players who's trying to get over to the B site uh, with Dodo. And it's uh, like, hmm. ah, man, a? they're everywhere. What are we meant to do? Well, I guess take their last time out. 12 players, it seems I'm playing against. But yeah, oh God, that is their last one. Good point, Chad. Well, I, I wanted to just reflect because do you remember earlier in the year, and I know we've covered a lot of Counter Strike, but we did cover Ents versus Navi. Uh, during Pro League, and Ents actually beat Navi 2-0. It was a 16-9 on Train and a 16-12 on Dust2. And we're like, man, this is looking good. Like, it looks like they've been working hard. Alu's playing well. We were excited to see Yampi in that double AWP setup that we're talking about here on this map as well. And, and things were looking good. And then they kind of simmered off again. Ariel, obviously, stepping down uh, indefinitely with medical leave. But again, Ents have a good start and then they fall off. So at least these signs to me are showing oh. that they have decent fundamentals. But what is that scout? So Alu's going to go for the two scouts back to back in, in, in the hopes of, of making some impact here. 
and they've gone for the Deagle and Armour alongside it. Halu knows that it's one drive-by scout shot away from getting them that early opening pick that's been eluding them, but it's against Device, and he does land his tag. He's still re-peeking through the door frame, brings Device down to 59. If they go long, that's not the right call against these pistols. Ents have fortified that section of the map. Doto and Sunny tucked in here. They know that Alu has that scout. So it might be a bit sheepish if they want to go for a standard A piece. They're actually walking out mid to B for whatever info they can find. Glaive and Dupree, the entry pack towards middle, looking scary. Taking space. The smoke usually would draw a couple of eyes. And it's just that. There's no bodies who are committing towards that mid to B. They're just jump spotting. You can see here Yampi's POV as Sergey deals with upper tunnels. But we still don't have a clear ending from Astralis right now. Three postured towards middle, one towards upper tunnels, and Zipex dealing with the long push. So they have all of the aggressive opportunities for Ents covered off, but we don't know where they want to finish. With the bomb in lower dark, it could be a mid to B split, and especially with all this territory that Dupree has, that would seem yeah. likely. Yeah, and it's especially considering that they know they're up against a likely, a, you know, not perfect buy. There isn't such a presence of a potential to be punished by an AWP. So here comes the utility. That's three smokes thrown in perfect unison and enables them to start their charge. Yampi had the tight line. Sergey trying to keep Dupree at bay. It is only Dupree, though. They're coming from the tunnel smoke, and they use it to lurk, and... Hi. Mid-air execution. He's been playing some Assassin's Creed. Glaive. Doesn't even need to have his feet planted to find the headshot. Now Ooh. Doto's having a go. Nice little find there. See how Sunny has an AK and everybody's still alive? Well, there was an extra AK and T spawn. And uh, that's just been hoovered on up. So Sunny will carry that Ooh. one through. And that's actually a very nice find as Device finds Alu. Glaive might go down. Doto with the knife. Yes. I love it. The balls to go for that. Yeah, he takes those. And another. Go on, Doto. Containing the exit of Astralis. Finds Magisk and nearly wins that duel. Gets him down to three. Finishes it off with the Deagle. Good shooting. I get the AWP and get out of here. That would be very nice. Oh, back turn though. Zipex doesn't ever feel like he leaves T spawn. No, Zipex is definitely going to be getting some uh, some frustrated death slams out of his positioning. But it's 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 round winning. It's game winning. And uh, Astralis have had a practically spotless. I almost want to call this a perfect T half. They lost the pistol and they haven't lost since. It's kind of poetic that it's Zipex to win that clutch as well to start them on this journey. True. He's back in the roster. He's back doing what he's always done. And the smiles on the face there of Glaive, I think, tell the story of this one. One more round, and that's all she wrote on map number one. We will be moving to Inferno next, but let's see how quick they can do it. Out towards Long Dupree. Molly on the blue bin does deny some of their options. Flashes are good from the CTs, and look at that. Oh, it's absolutely perfect. That's what they've been trying to do this whole time. You get the timing. They're exposed. Their options are limited. And oh, okay, maybe Glaive has something to say. Goes down to Alu. Magisk and Device, a two versus four. And they want to go with pace here. They're not going to let the round run out. They know that they've got the CT spread out at this point. They don't want to let them stack. Hello? Crazy. Ah, oh, that's a nice idea. He has the bomb. Yeah, I like it, though. This is crazy. Like that mid smoke, you're not expecting. Oh, Dodo's certainly not expecting. Oh! oh. oh Timing. Man. Dodo's best friend. Yeah. Gosh, he gets the info for free. Good luck, Device. Yeah, now you've got a real meal of a round to work through. Oh, Alu's found your toes. Magis does get the trade. Now they know Doto's alone on long, but the bomb's been lost. Magis has to make a choice. Drop down fast and win. Two 1v1. Sergey's holding it. Good play from Ensign. And I mean, they're just putting a bow on what was started on long. Sunny getting the credit and, of course, getting two kills. Nine is total now. He's been relatively quiet, considering he's definitely one of the stars of this Ents show. And we do get to see the double orbs this time. They've been bought out. Oh, nice was shot, a good yeah. shot. Okay, so with the two orbs, let's see how much of a defense they can put up. Locking down long is always a key to this, making sure you can set your orpers up. You need to deal with the aggression first before the orbs can truly become deadly, and Yampi's actually taken a massive chunk of damage. Yeah, that's no fun for anyone. He's taken even more. And Sergei gets out orb device with a left eye at crouch peak. Flubs his flash, but mission accomplished. And Dupree is ahead of a very bad smoke. Speaking of smokes, Doto's lying in wait. He should have an advantage here, you'd think. 
but Zipex is hidden away. Oh dear. Doto likely gonna be spurred forward upon the loss of his teammate. Zipex's positioning is just so frustrating. He knows what they're up to. Alu needs one here. Fast denies it. No one mid, he says. He really wants to take some info and take a fight. A quick scope into device. A two on three though. It still favors the Danes. Glaive knows he has to stop that a push for info. Alu coming in from one angle and Yampi from CT, that's a hard, very hard shot, and a long plant practically confirms the round. Glaive will catch this. He doesn't oh. go down to it, though. He gets to, to brought down even lower to 9 HP as he gets the frag. Yampi can't do much. He hits a great shot onto Glaive, but with his HP, the margin for error, he'd have to somehow swing around 180, bang the head off Dupree. And yeah, he's just not ready for that. Let's go of his crouch key. He gets the one tap, but doesn't even get a chance. So, 16, Astralis taking the pick of the Finns and doing